the cloud. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the Latinos in Tech Scholarship Workshop. And I want to thank Belisa from the Hispanic Foundation of Silicon Valley for taking time out of our day today to, you know, present to us. And so for the students present and maybe tuning in on YouTube afterwards, um, feel free to, you know, ask any questions that you might have. The space is really for you to, you know, get support with the application process. Um, and maybe, you know, get some of your questions answered. So I will now pass it over to Melissa. Thank you so much, Elisa. I realize our names are just one letter off, which is funny to hear you say it. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melissa. I'm the Education Programs Manager at the Hispanic Foundation of Silicon Valley. And I have been here at the foundation for about two years now. Next month will be two years. Um, I am here today uh, to talk to you all about our Latinos in Technology Scholarship uh, Program. In my role at the foundation, I oversee all of our educational excellence programs. And one of those programs is the LITSI, the LITSI Scholarship. That's what we call it for short, for Latinos in Technology Scholarship Initiative. So if you hear me saying LITSI, it's, it's this. Um, <clears throat> so my goal today, is to tell all of you a little bit more about who we are as a foundation, what exactly is the Latinos in Technology Scholarship Program, what does the program entail, and then I'll go over some general brief instructions on how you can get started and apply, and then we'll of course have time for a Q&A. And like I said, since we have a smaller group right now, feel free to at any point ask questions either in the chat um, or turn off your mics. I'll try to pause in between slides as well. Um, to allow for that. Um, and if you are able to and wish to turn on your camera, that is also welcome so that we can all sort of um, see each other and interact given that we're in a virtual space. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Can you all see that? Okay, perfect. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and get started. For today's agenda, like I said, We'll start with an intro. I'll, tell, I'll talk to all of you about uh, the nitty gritty of our Latinos in Tech Scholarship. Go over a demo, Q&A, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and close out. Who is the Hispanic Foundation of Silicon Valley? Um, we have sort of three main goals, to excel, lead, and connect. The foundation um, is dedicated to supporting the future of Latinos in Silicon Valley and we do it in three main ways, um, but essentially um, we do this through community philanthropy, investment in education excellence, such as the Latinos in Tech program, um, leadership development and convening and engaging of the greater um, Latinx community here in Silicon Valley. Now, when we get to our three main priorities, you could see them here really broken down on the screen. Um, we have, of course, educational excellence at the top of the screen. Um, that is my um, area, my sort of bread and butter, so to speak. Um, we focus specifically on STEM education and college readiness for Latinx students and their families from elementary school to and through college. Um, and our uh, college readiness programs in STEM education focus on uh, Santa Clara and San Mateo counties when it comes to our programs, but LITSI is a little bit different and I'll get into that. Um, in a bit. Um, at the leadership level, leadership development, we have something called the Latino Board Leadership Academy, where essentially we train Latinos who work in various fields um, in their career, and we teach them how to become successful board members for nonprofit organizations here in the area. Um, to date, we've graduated a little over 530 uh, fellows from LBLA and a little over 70% of them are placed on a board of directors um, after participating in LBLA. And in our convening and engaging pillar, there's three sort of main programs that we have. Um, our Hispanic Foundation Ball, which is our biggest fundraising event of the year. Our Latino Report Card, um, which is where we present research 
on the quality of life of Latinos in several different areas. Um, and the last but not least, we have something called the Latinx Speaker Series, where we host panels and virtual speaking events uh, to talk about different things that are affecting our community in the area. Now, I want us to transition into the Latinos in Tech Scholarship Program because that's really why we're here. Um, so what is the goal of our Latinos in Technology Scholarship? Our goal is to provide financial support to Latinx students such as yourselves, help facilitate college graduation and get you all through that finish line um, and support a pipeline of Latinx professionals in STEM. You all know we live in Silicon Valley. Latinos make up almost 30% of the population in Silicon Valley. However, when it comes to representation in the fields of STEM and tech, we make up maybe 4%. So it's ironic that we live in the birth of technology here in Silicon Valley, and yet there continues to be such low representation of our community in these fields. So the Litzy Scholarship in reality was created to help fight against that and provide a space of support for students so that they can continue excelling and get additional support um, so that you all can finish your degrees in STEM. So what exactly does the Latinos in Technology Scholarship provide? We provide up to $10,000 a year for up to three years to incoming third and fourth year Latinx students that are majoring in STEM at a four year university. In addition to the financial support, we provide professional development programs for our Litzy scholars. And we do that in two ways. One is through group career coaching. Um, we partner with Career Launch Academy to provide a six week virtual training program on the 101 of professional development. So you all can start developing your skills, how to initiate an informational interview, how to start working on my resume, how to work on my professional presence uh, online on platforms like LinkedIn, for example. And our third uh, priority in supporting Litzy scholars is to help provide access to you all on summer internship opportunities in your field of STEM that will help you start to get more experience and start to get your feet wet um, in your area of interest so that by the time you graduate college, um, you already have some great experience in your resume. And how do we do this? Um, the HFSV partners with various corporate partners and funders um, that support us uh, to work and create opportunities for our Litzy scholars to learn of new internship opportunities, fellowships, externships, and make sure that all of that information and those resources get to all of you. Um, I see, I am looking at the chat. Marisa said, oh, you wrote a, a paper on Latinx representation in, in, in STEM or in the, in the STEM field. That's great. Um, it's really, really important. And that's the whole reason why we have this scholarship, right? Because we wanna make sure that there's more Latinos and Latinas in uh, the STEM field in the STEM career and representing. Um, do I have any questions on this slide so far? Again, feel free to ask questions in the chat or um, you can just turn on your mic and ask a question. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going then. Here on this um, next slide, uh, you can see just a little bit of a breakdown of who are Latinos in Technology Scholars are. So to date, since the beginning of our scholarship program in 2016, we have awarded 427 scholars to date. 81% of our Litsi scholars are first generation. 42% are Latinas. And about 27% are community college transfers. This is really, really important for us because the more community college transfers we have, the more probability that you all will be able to take advantage of the scholarship renewal um, of up to two to three years, right? We, we wanna try and get scholars uh, earlier on 
in our scholarship program so they can take advantage of that. Um, on this next screen, you can see a general breakdown of uh, some of the more popular majors that we have within our program. I will say this, this is not an exhaustive list, meaning there are a lot more majors than this that are represented um, by our Latinos and Technology scholars. However, our most popular majors, our top three you can see here, are mechanical engineering, computer science, and civil engineering. And I believe um, those of you that shared, um, there was a civil engineer in our space and a computer engineer, which is another pretty popular major for us. You can see here, it's like number six. Um, mathematics, biochem, bioengineering, human biology. Pretty much all of the engineerings are pretty popular. You see mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering. Um, and so, um, like I said, we have a lot more majors that are represented. So if by chance you don't see your exact major here, that does not mean that it doesn't qualify. STEM is a very, very, um, it has a very wide range. Um, and so one thing that I can do too is share our Latinos in Tech annual report from 2021 as well, um, because it goes a lot more into detail on our majors and our universities and all of that. Um, here, you can see a really brief breakdown of what universities are represented by our students that are LITC scholars. And again, this is not exhaustive. Um, these are just some of the more popular universities. San Jose State continues to rank as our number one most represented university um, by Latinos and Tech scholars. It makes a lot of sense because the foundation is based here in San Jose and we um, are more well known in this area. I myself um, graduated with my master's at San Jose State last spring. Um, so um, I'm a little biased in that sense. Um, but we see UC Santa Cruz, we see UC Berkeley, SF State, Santa Clara University, UCLA, UC San Diego. Um, there's more than 45 other universities um, that our scholars attend. And so before I get into the demo, I want to see if there are any other questions about sort of the background of the scholarship um, and some of these details that I just shared. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to walk you all through our actual scholarship portal. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm talking too much. I have linked in the chat the direct link for our scholarship application. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to share my screen and show you what the actual application screen looks like. And this is where I'll also review some of the more nitty gritty and, and specific requirements um, and details that we ask um, once you work on submitting your application. So let me go ahead and share my screen once again. Uh, can you all see <clears throat> uh, my screen? Excellent. So as I said, our scholarship is up to $10,000 a year for up to three years. And there are sort of, there's several requirements um, that we look for uh, students that apply for our scholarship. Um, <clears throat> one important thing to note, our scholarship is due on March 18th, meaning you all have, I would say, maybe like a few days shy of a month. Um, to start your applications, if you haven't already, if you did, that's wonderful, um, <clears throat> and submit. In terms of specific eligibility and requirements, um, we ask the students identify as having Latinx or Hispanic origin, that you have a uh, STEM major or have been accepted into a STEM program at a four year. And this is where we get into the details on transfer students and what year um, students are eligible for. 
So we are looking for students that are entering their junior or senior year at a four-year university. So meaning you could be a sophomore right now, but if you're gonna be a junior or a third year by August of 2022, then you would be eligible to apply. <clears throat> if you're a junior right now, meaning you're a third year right now, and you're gonna be a senior, you're gonna be a fourth year student by August, 2022, then you are also eligible. So <clears throat> essentially the goal is that you will still be enrolled in school by the next school year, which would be August, 2022 or September. But I, I feel like San Jose State starts in August. Does that make sense? Um, I know we have, um, we had a freshman um, here in our space. So it is a little bit early. Um, however, it's good that you know these details. So in a couple years, um, <clears throat> well, no, next year, once you're getting ready to finish up your sophomore year, then you would be eligible because you would be going into your third year. And I know I mentioned, or I, I recall someone um, saying they were getting ready to transfer. So if you're at a community college right now, but you're going to be transferring um, into San Jose State um, in August, then you are also eligible to apply. We ask that students are either graduates of a high school in a Northern California county here. Um, you could see the 11 counties listed. Alameda, Contra Costa, Santa Clara, San Mateo, Sonoma, Yolo, San Francisco County. Or you could be from, let's say, oh, I reside in San Diego, California, but I'm going to be enrolled in San Jose State, or I am enrolled in San Jose State, then those students qualify as well. We ask that students have a GPA of about 3.0. That you have a demonstrated financial need, um, which we see based on your um, FAFSA or your um, DREAM Act um, documents. And we ask that students are either, um, they can be either US citizens or DACA recipients, AB 540 students are also eligible as well. Those are the general requirements that we look at. And then there's a couple of documents that we require that are submitted into the portal. One is a personal statement because we really wanna to get to know all of you. Um, and there are several prompts, you could see them here listed. You could talk about your major and your career goals in STEM. You could talk about um, some of your personal, personal characteristics, what you like to do, what you enjoy about your education or any other activities um, that are related to STEM that you do. You could reflect on yourself um, as a young scholar, as a young professional, and life lessons you've learned along the way. And you can also talk about why you think you're a great uh, candidate for the LITC scholarship. <clears throat> In terms of financial need documentation, I just mentioned this pretty briefly. Um, we ask that you update, upload your uh, student aid report um, into the portal. Um, and if you're a DACA student, to upload your California Dream Act application. We ask for unofficial transcripts uh, that you can get from your um, school portal and uh, have them be sent to the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. And last but not least, and I, quite frankly, this is probably the one that you all should start on right away, is your letter of reference. We ask that you get a letter of reference submitted um, and that it's written by a college professor um, in a STEM class that you're taking now or have taken and that the letter be on official school letterhead. This is something that's pretty standard for professors, um, but something that we definitely ask for. There's two ways that your recommender can submit the letter of rec. Um, one is for them to send it to you and you upload it yourself onto the portal for your application. Um, or two is that your recommenders can submit it for you as well. One thing that I would really, really suggest that you all do, in addition to this being the first thing that you take care of and reaching out to a professor, is also making sure that you check in with them 
and that you let them know that you need it before the deadline. So our scholarship deadline is March 18th. So I would say when you write your email or you talk to your professor um, requesting that they write you a letter that you say, you know, our scholarship is due or this letter of recommendation um, is due by March 16th or March 15th. Um, because it gives you that buffer and you're not stressing waiting for at the last minute um, for something to come in. So that's just a general tip or suggestion in terms of preparation so that you can be um, ready to go and, and prepared. I'll go ahead and pause and see if there's any questions about that um, before I walk you all through what the actual portal looks like um, once you go in. Any questions, clarifications about requirements or anything like that so far? Um, I had a question. I'm just curious. Uh, I'm not too sure what a letterhead is for the letter of recommendation or the letter of reference. Yes, it's a it's essentially almost like a like a what would it be? <clears throat> like a stamp that makes the document official to verify that it's from like San Jose State, for example. Um, it's pretty standard for professors. They already know what that is, and they already have that sort of format ready to go for when they write letters or official documents uh, for other reasons. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or clarifications? Now's the time, y'all. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again so that I can walk you all through what the portal actually looks like and also share a couple tips and benefits that come from uh, applying for the Litzy scholarship. <clears throat> so give me one second, let me share my screen again. Okay, can you all see that? Wonderful. So you could see here, um, once you click on the link, there's an apply now button. Um, you could see here that this is the website for the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. They are a local foundation um, that manages many other scholarships besides the Litzy scholarship. And this is a great benefit for several reasons and I'm gonna show you why. Once you click apply now, um, I'm logged into like a test account so that I can show you. This is what the portal actually looks like, okay? So once you create your account, you need to click on my profile. And here is where you start filling out your general information. What is your name, your prefixes, email, the nitty gritty on just your own demographics, phone number, date of birth, um, identified gender, current education status. Are you a non-traditional or re-entry student? Um, what type of program do you plan to enroll in? So this is where um, the requirements we were talking about earlier become really, really important, okay? Where, what do you plan to enroll in for the academic year? You wanna enroll into a four-year program right, whether you're a community college transfer or you're a current sophomore at a four-year university already, your, your goal is to be in a four-year program, okay? Do you plan to enroll um, full-time, part-time? Uh, we do consider both part-time and full-time students, but we do give preference to full-time students. And then you, you work on filling out the rest of your demographic, your education, what high school did you attend, um, GPA, if you took your SATs, da, 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 da. education, what college are you currently enrolled at, what is your GPA, what is your standing. Um, if you're going to be transferring from a community college into a four-year, what is your first choice school, have you been accepted, yes or no, if you haven't, when do you expect to hear back. And what is your second choice school? If you don't have a second choice, you can always put NA. What are your academic goals? Meaning what are 
what is either your confirmed major or the major that you want to have. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with Elisa. Oh, actually I could put it in the chat. I just remembered. We have an FAQ that has video demos that break down the specifics of how to create your profile and how to correctly fill in some of these fields that will help facilitate that process for you. Um, you go through your extracurriculars, your financial information, ta, ta, ta. And when you go back to the portal, the Silicon Valley Community Foundation uh, portal will actually filter and provide a list of any and all scholarships in their database that you qualify for based on what you fill out in your portal, in your profile. So you could see here, my test account has all of these scholarships that I qualify for based on the information that I filled out on my profile. So this goes beyond the Latino Syntag scholarship. Um, it's just a general excellent resource um, for you all as students because these are all scholarships you can apply for. So here you could see the Latinos in Technology Scholarship pops up. So here you could see it's due March 18th. For me, because this is a test profile and I've already started it, um, it just says details, but for you it would say apply. So you click on that and then it'll show you all the details for eligibility. Ta -ta -ta -ta. And then it'll start to give you those action items. Like, oh, you need your letter of rec, upload your personal statement, all those other documents. And after you submit, you have to just keep um, updated here because it'll show you like, these are the items that you need to take care of um, in order to be considered for the scholarship or we need extra information from you. Ta -ta -ta -ta. And then here is just a spot where any application that you start for any of these scholarships will pop up here. Like these are the scholarships I'm working on. Um, these are the ones that I have been ineligible for. These are the scholarships that I got. Um, and that's in a nutshell how um, this portal works and how you all can take advantage of it. Of course, for the Litzy scholarship, we want all of you to apply, um, but for other uh, scholarships in the area as well. Are there any questions on that? All right. And so the only other thing that I have on um, the agenda today, again, is for a Q&A. So what I'll do, though, um, let me upload that FAQ that we have. Um, which will provide you brief demos, again, that go into more detail on how to fill out your portal. Um, there we go. So I just sent the PDF um, in the chat. Are there any other questions? Again, this is the time to ask. Any questions or comments about um, what the program is like, requirements, documents, anything like that. Um, I had a question. So I have a letter of recommendation from my professor already. Um, I guess how recent does it have to be, I guess, the when it's dated or? Uh, well, ideally it would be recent from like uh, sometime this year or in the last, um, year, right? Our scholarship opened in January. So ideally it would be a letter of rec from last month to now. Okay, Thanks, thank Mauricio. You. Yes, we look forward to seeing you in the future. If there are any other questions, my last things is just how to stay connected and how to also um, reach out to me. I encourage you all to follow us on social media. We post regularly, whether it's for events, um, <clears throat> community workshops that we're having for students or for families, um, as well as other um, resources that we have going on at the foundation. Um, Elisa, so you have your hand raised. Oh, yes, um, I did have a question, you know, 
uh, for do you have any tips or recommendations for the personal statement you know responses like what do you think a successful response would have like in their statements like what what makes a candidate that you choose for the scholarship stand out versus maybe like other generic responses that's a really really great question and <clears throat> the personal statement is really really important because we want to give students that space to tell us a little bit more about themselves your GPA does not define you, right? Your major does not define you. There's so much more to us than our basic sort of demographics and information. I would say that a successful personal statement is one where we really feel like we're getting to know you. What is your story? Why are you doing what you're doing? And what has your journey been like? As Latinx students, a lot of us being first, I myself am first generation. Um, our experience is very unique in a way that some of the challenges and the struggles that we go through um, are very, very difficult, especially for those of you that are going through that STEM journey. Majoring in a STEM degree is not easy. And so don't be afraid to be vulnerable and just to share who you are and, and where are you in life right now and, and where do you wanna go? That's really what we wanna hear is what are your goals? Who are you? And, um, <clears throat> and why do you, why are you doing what you're doing and excelling, right, into your career and preparing yourselves um, for the professional world little by little? Here you could see on the screen um, contact information. If you have any general questions about today's presentation or you just want to connect and talk a little bit more, um, you can see my contact information here, um, my email, melissa at hfsv.org. As you start your scholarship application or continue it if you've started it already, um, any questions related to the portal um, or to the specifics on the scholarship, email scholarships at siliconvalleycf.org. I see Elisa here is putting some resources in the chat, which you should also take advantage of as well. Yes, thank you. And I, I did want to share, it looks like, um, so we do have a writing center here on campus. Um, so I think that's a really great resource to explore and check out for yourself. Like Melissa said, you know, the personal statement is a huge component to your scholarship application. So, you know, it's really good to have somebody review it, give you feedback mm -hmm. before you submit it. And checking out the uh, Writing Center on campus can be really useful. Uh, they do have upcoming events. So the second link that I added in the chat box shares uh, an upcoming event on February 28th that is specific for personal statements. So that could be a really great workshop to attend if you want to get more just uh, kind of feedback or just more knowledge on how to create a strong personal statement. Um, so definitely check out uh, you know, our campus resources that are available to you. Um, and they also have one-on-one -on -one, um, you know, uh, writing tutors that can help you out. So I encourage you to check it out. Thank you, Elisa. Any other questions, comments, clarifications before we conclude our session today? All right, so what I'll do is I can stick around for another minute or two in case um, any of you want to ask a question more individually um, or a clarification. And again, I can be reached here. And if you have any questions about the scholarship specifics on the portal, um, please reach out to scholarships at siliconvalleycf.org. And lastly, I just want to say thank you for joining today, for coming to learn about the Latinos in Tech Scholarship. And I hope uh, to see um, you all um, listed as applicants and hopefully um, we might see you um, <clears throat> in the summer um, if you are awarded the scholarship. So I look forward to that and I hope that you all have a great rest of your week. Yes.
Thank you so much, Melissa, for your presentation. Again, I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions, um, or you can even ask now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 